Yeah, I mean, I think the first and most important thing for me to convey is just how happy and excited I am. I'm obviously extremely happy about the prospect of coming back to the place that I call home. Um, extremely excited. That's a community piece. Extremely excited to be coming back to the soccer club that I feel like is is in my heart. Um, it, it, you know, looking back at my career, it, it played the biggest piece in, in, in everything for me in the game. So extremely happy to be coming back with the club uh, and extremely excited about the opportunity um, and what I can hopefully um, do for the club and for the community. So, um, yeah, it feels very similar to when I retired uh, as a player and walked right off the playing field and into the coaching world. Uh, because now it's similar. I'm walking right off the coaching the the coaching field, so to speak, and, and into a front office role. So um, it's a great time to be Jason Kreis. I'm I'm <laughs> super excited. Not sleeping much at night, um, but all that stuff's good. So um, before we get to questions, Jason, how about in your own words, maybe describe the uh, the role that has been uh, discussed between you and and. John Kimball in support of Kirk Schmidt and Pablo Mastroeni and and maybe share whatever insights you can about your discussions with Ryan Smith and the Blitzer group that brought you here. Jeez, I'm gonna <laughs> everybody got 30 minutes to listen. Uh, no, it's um the role, uh the role is kind of a all encompassing is not the right word, but from a from a perspective of of me. The role involves business stuff as well as soccer stuff. Um, and so I'm going to be learning a ton of stuff on the business side. Uh, and then I'm going to be hopefully adding a ton of experience on the soccer side. That's the best way to kind of summarize it. Um, in particular, on the soccer side, what am I talking about? I'm talking about, you know, getting involved with the academy and hoping hoping to set a very clear methodology, a very clear pathway a very clear alignment between the academy and the second team and the first team. In particular, they're also getting involved with the coaches, all of the coaches in the academy and the second team and the first team. I hope to be somebody that can be a bit of a mentor to younger coaches and also a bit more of just a sounding board for Pablo um, to help him um, to sort of disseminate how he sees the game. Um, amongst his staff, his team, give him some different ideas about how to communicate those things, as well as disseminate that information down into the second team, into the first team. Um, from a team building perspective, as far as, you know, working with Kurt and Tony, um, I'm just going to be another voice in the room to help collaborate on all of those decisions. Um, and then, you know, that's pretty much the soccer side. Um also, you know, obviously working with with all of the staffing decisions as we move forward, because everybody knows we've got some of those on our plate right now. Uh, and then the business side is, is hey, you know, and, and I've been very clear about this um, through all of my experiences in the game. I haven't had a whole ton of the actual business stuff about running a cap, understanding what a budget looks like, sponsorships, ticketing, all those sorts of things. So that's the area where I'm just looking to um, guys like John Kimball and Kurt to hopefully lend me some of their thoughts and be mentors for me uh, in that world. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Jeff, let's go out to you since you were first on the call today and then we'll go to Alex Vehar after that. Okay, yeah, hey Jason, good to see you. I thought you did all that stuff when you were a first head coach. You did all the signings. And... <laughs> <laughs> well, good you on you that you good would players remember. from Argentina. At Thank one point. you. That was about a hundred years back, and for <laughs> I think a period of from April until August, we didn't really have a, a general manager. Although I would say that John Ellinger was around still and helping me in some of those decisions. But in the very first few weeks and transition period, first few weeks to maybe a month and a half, yeah, I had to go down, you know, to to Argentina to find players and to negotiate contracts and to do trades. My first trade, I think, was about a week and a half after I took the job. And so, yeah, I do have some of those experiences. I guess I probably got that a little wrong. Well, I want to ask you about coming back here. You mentioned you're excited. I mean, your first player, a coach, led him to an MLS Cup. Was this a move you anticipated or really wanted even before the position was opened or offered? The, 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 the move was very much wanted. Um, that is absolutely correct. I, I had... 
have been thinking about making this transition for probably a year and a half now. Um, and so in my mind, as I was thinking about making this transition, I was thinking where would be the absolute best spot for me to do this at? And it was Real Salt Lake. Um, because now you get to add in this emotional piece, right? And I'm an emotional guy. So for me to have like career objectives, but to, to be able to include this emotional piece meant that Real Salt Lake was the absolute best spot for it. Um, now anticipation, no, because I, you know, I didn't, you know, it was difficult for me to understand whether this, any sort of opportunity would be there. Uh, Cause as I, I've already identified, like it's not clear, right? It's not clear Jason Christ for exposition because I haven't done, I don't have the experience in this side of, of, of the game yet. So it's really about who would be flexible enough to be able to offer me a position that wasn't maybe so, so rigid. You know what I mean? It's not general manager or technical director, right? So, so RSL, I think to, to their credit um, and to ownership's credit, has been willing to say, you know what, you're a good fit fit for us from a culture perspective and from your experiences perspective, but maybe not an exact right fit for exactly what we're looking for. But it doesn't matter. We just want to get you in the door. Uh, one uh, another thing for me, real quick, is uh, I mean, when you hear your name coming back, people think, oh, he's going to be the head coach. That's not the case. What have your discussions been like with Pablo about your roles and and how you two are going to work together? Yeah, as I looked at the the perspective, a couple things here. Number one, I think it's important to say that when I was out here for my son's um, parents' weekend at University of Utah, uh, I made it a point to come and talk to Pablo. Um, and and my 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 desire to talk to Pablo was just to initially plant the seed that hey, this is what I'm thinking. I'd like I'm thinking about getting out of coaching. Uh, and I'm thinking about going to going to Real Salt Lake and pitching this idea of of what I would like to do. And so I want you to know from a very early standpoint, before I even do any of that, I want you to know that this is my intention. Uh, and what do you think about that? And Pablo was like, I, I love the idea. I think it would be really great for me. Um, I think it would be really great for the club. And so there's that early communication before anything else happened that I think put us in a really solid place. And then I would tell you that that it was intentional, um, intentional, uh, intentional part of my plan and thinking was that I needed to then follow that up once I once I got here to sit with Pablo and and say very clearly, let's just lay our cards on the table. Uh, and from my card to you it, that I'm laying on the table is that I have no interest in your job, absolutely none. I'm done with that that, that portion of my world, right? And I have a ton of appreciation for what you're doing. So there's this, you, what you have for me is, is total clarity that I don't want your job and also total clarity that I want to support you 1000% to bring out, to, to bring you to the, to the best possible place for you to utilize your strengths. So I would say, I think we've covered all the bases there to, and, and, and feel very safe to say that, that, that we have a very clear understanding already. Alex. Sorry, thanks. Uh, Jason, uh, Alex Sehar with the Salt Lake Tribune. Um, good morning. It's still the morning. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, over the years, um, you know, there have been various uh, positions open at RSL, um, you know, because of moves, either a coach, a coaching position was open and a GM position was open. And it seemed like your name was kind of like in those kind of like uh, in the ether for, for a lot of those over the years. And obviously now you're you're here in this kind of hybrid role um that you've been talking about i'm curious like over the years um how kind of close were you to to one of those other jobs that was open and like why do you feel like this hybrid role is better than something that maybe you could have had in the past that would have like you said gotten you in the door to a place mm -hmm. where you feel at home well, you, you know, you speak to a coaching role and a, and a GM role in the past, right? In in particular, for being specific, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I would say is, I feel that at those moments, I would have, if you had asked me at those moments, is this the is this the best role for you that, that you're going for and that you're considering and they're considering you, and I would have said yes, uh, absolutely, right? But but things change and life happens over time. Uh, and I would say that now, right in this position that I am, I, I think that this is the the absolute best role for me that's that's possible. 
Um, and, and in particular, I would say that, that this role allows me to come in and learn, right? And that's different. That's very different than when I took the head coaching position. Um, if you know what I mean, like, so, so think, think, think relatively from my chair, when I went from professional soccer player to professional head coach in a day. Okay. And, and now the truth is that, that I'm not the finished product that I, I need, there's so many things that I need to learn as a coach, but yet I have this expectation to win right away. Now, thankfully for me, I had an owner that, that understood that and didn't, didn't put any of that pressure at all i mean in fact he was very much like we're in this together i don't expect you to win right away but at some point i'm going to uh and so to to if i was to think about you know right now coming into this role and saying you're the guy in charge let's forget about the title but you're the guy in charge of all things soccer i would say wow you know here we are again where where i need to learn a bunch of stuff but yet i'm expected to be the finished product um, and so I think that that's what makes this role in particular ideal for me, because I feel like I can contribute in all these areas that I can contribute in and feel really comfortable about that. And then I can learn in all these areas that I don't. And there's no great expectation upon me right now. And um, so obviously your name is going to be very resonant with the, with the fan base here. Um I'm curious, what what can you say to the RSL fans about your coming back, your role, and what they can expect as a fan base with you in the front office, if that makes sense? Yeah, no, I think I think the the one area that I would um, not make promises about, but the one area that I would say to the fans that I'm going to be very very focused on is establishing again a clear identity of who we are at Real Salt Lake. And I'm very, very interested in and want to that identity to not just be about the staff members that are in this building in Harriman or the staff members that are in the stadium uh, in Sandy or the players that are here. I want it to involve the entire community. So I want this identity that we established to be a clear reflection of our fans and the people that support us. So I'm going to be trying to learn again what that looks like because 10 years ago, I would tell you, I would have told you, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent, that I had a very clear thought about our identity, and that I thought that that identity represented represented a lot of the community here in, in the area. So that's an area that I'm I'm really focused on and really passionate about is is establishing, um, a, a re reestablishing because you know the fact is I know it's continued reestablishing a really clear identity for for what real salt lake is and who we are any initial ideas for that um not yet no uh let's go to chandler holt with uh, ksl sports Hey, Jason, I just have a question about uh, the soccer side. Um, RSL mm -hmm. made a lot of moves last year, and they also have a lot of young players on the roster. I just want to know mm -hmm. sort of what you think about the future um, of Real Salt Lake and if uh, the players on the team sort of had any impact on you making the decision to return. Um, you First question, well, I'm going to take the second question first. The, the players okay. in, in, the, in the group um, had no influence upon my decision. Um, in fact, if 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 the team was, you know, ended up the worst place team in the league this year, that would have had no impact upon my decision because I see the decision as a as a moving forward decision as as uh, you know what is the what is the impact that I can have uh, going forward. So it wasn't like it was like picking out well they're not a good enough team. You know that that has nothing to do with it from from my perspective. That's more like a that's more viewing things from like a coaching perspective. Now I'll answer the, the first part. Second, um, the the young players in this team, I think are very exciting. I think the the, the players that have been brought in here um, that have a big future at this club and have a big future in the game, they're all very exciting. And then past that, when I look down at the academy players, I went to see those guys play last week. There's some incredibly talented and high potential players there as well. So when you think more about that side of things, then you'd say, yeah, this is a great opportunity, right, to get in there and work with the entire club to understand and develop a clear philosophy about how we're going to develop these players and how we're going to move into the worldwide market, which we need to, 
is to sell the players. Um, so, so that's all exciting. Awesome. Thank you. Uh huh. Joseph. Hey, Jason. Um, I wanted to ask, first of all, about the academy and the transitions from the, from the academy to the first team. We've seen a couple of recent success stories uh, in terms of that transition with David Ochoa, Gavin Beavers, and Rodi Hidalgo being a couple uh, who have come directly from the academy into the first team. Uh, but they're more the exception than the rule. Uh, mm -hmm. In terms of the those future prospects that you've that you've seen and kids like Axel K or Xavier Goso who made debuts this year. Uh, what is, what is the plan or ideal for them going forward uh, and integrating into the first team? Yeah. So, so, you know, it's interesting that you mentioned the, the players that have, have played and have been big contributors. Um, and I would say my, my immediate thought when you were saying that was actually, we have a ton, not a ton, there's a specific number that's less than a ton. Um, but we have quite a few guys that are on homegrown contracts um, in, a, in, in and around and, and have first team contracts and we have second team contracts. So there's a lot of players that are here and are ready to be brought along, which isn't to say that all of them will be brought along. Um, we need to we need to remember that this is not a zero sum game. This isn't like every player that comes from our academy is going to be a top professional. No, that's not not that way at all. But we need to, as a club, be thinking about how we give not give, I'm not going to say to take that back, but how we provide a pathway for these players to have the best possible opportunity to earn their position, to earn their minutes with Pablo. Uh, and that's, that's, that's a, the, the piece of it that, that I think a lot of people don't think about um, because they think, well, you have these, this bright young player, he needs to be given minutes and he needs to be given a chance because ultimately we all, we all would agree that that playing in the games is where you is a big big piece of your development and that's where you start to get onto the global market there's no way to get into the global market unless you're actually showing a capability to play within the first team but you get there you get those minutes you get that experience by earning it and you earn it by getting in the training sessions with the first team and showing that you deserve to be there. You get those minutes in, in the training sessions with the first team by showing that you're an elite player at the Monarchs level week in and week out. You get that opportunity because you've trained really well with the Monarchs, right? And you get that opportunity because you were a top, top player in our 17 uh, team. So it needs to be, it needs to be laid out a very, very clear process for how players will earn opportunities to play in the first team. And then in terms of your relationship with Tony Beltran and the GM side of things, you talked a bit about working with Pablo, but I haven't heard you talk much about working with Tony. What have your conversations yeah. with him been like so far? Really, really good. That was another um, very fortunate situation. You know, I think it was, I would have to say it was lucky because I don't think anybody planned it out, um, but very fortunate that we were able to actually go to Phoenix, right? Um, for five days, because what happens when you go somewhere with other people is pretty soon you're having every meal together, you're having conversations in a car from the hotel to the field and from the field back to the car, you're getting to have all of these intrinsic conversations with, you, with each other um, that you wouldn't have if, if we're here in Harriman and, you know, just kind of doing our nine to five working and then going home to, to families and that those sorts of things. So put us in a really good situation to to spend some time together just get to have uh, chats about a lot of different things um kurt and i worked together for two years uh, at inter miami uh, and so we have a pre-existing working relationship which is a, which is a very good one um and then tony and i obviously have a huge history together so um there's a there's a there's an ethical and social understanding that's already exists between us uh, and the working side uh, so far has been great, and I have no doubts it will continue to be great because Tony's a, a fantastic, um, fantastic uh, young man finding his way in the game. And then last question from me, uh, in regards to working with Pablo, you've mentioned uh, working with him and getting the new assistant coaches. Uh, that was a decision in terms of getting rid of the assistant coaches that was confusing for a lot of the fans. Uh, can you mm -hmm. address that a little bit and what 
maybe what went into that decision as well mm-hmm. as what the plan is going forward with those assistant coaches. Yeah, I have, this is an area that, that, that I feel fortunate that I could do, right. Just to maybe clarify some things. I consider myself a pretty good communicator. Um, and in this role as a non-coach, I think I'll be able to be, to share probably more information with the media than I certainly was as a coach. Anybody that media side that, that worked with me as a coach would have said I was always tight lipped. And I would have said, thank you. I, I was because there's a competitive factor there. Um, but uh, what I would say is that um, first and foremost, that decision happened before I was brought on, but it has been explained very clearly to me. And I think that I can have no problem explaining it clearly. Pablo is, is a coach that all of us, including me, um, feel is a very good one. And we feel that Pablo has particular strengths that we really, really appreciate, respect, and want to get him to even push harder on those strengths. In order to do that, Pablo needs to be surrounded by the right assistant coaches. Um, And even Pablo in some of the chats that we've had um, has at first, of course, he was very disappointed by the decision, but, you know, after spending some time and removing some of the emotion, he in fact agrees with. And that's, again, credit to the, the, the quality of a person that Pablo is. And we think that's an important factor in, in his being a quality head coach. So we are in, we have been, we have been very specific and structured in the qualities that we're looking in, looking at for assistant coaches to place around Pablo to make the whole coaching staff better, but also to continue to develop Pablo as a coach and to allow him to really lean into his strengths. Um, let's go to Jackson Payne with Deseret News. Hey, Jason. Um, I just wanted to ask, what about your experience at Real Salt Lake has set it apart from the other clubs that you've been a part of throughout your career? What, what about it is special to you? You mentioned Utah being home. Obviously you've had some big moments here with the club. What about Real is sets it apart from where else you've been? Well, you know, spoke to it earlier. For, for me, it's first and foremost about community. Um, it's about the fact that every time my wife and I would come back here um, over the years, and we usually come back about once a year, Um, we would always leave and say, man, that that really just kind of felt like home. Uh, And so there's that sort of uh, intrinsic social aspect, community aspect, I think was first and foremost important for my wife and I. There's the part about the soccer part, of course, you know, we had so many successes here and it was such a special time um, that there's always going to, you're always going to be drawn back to a place that feels like you were successful. You're always going to be drawn back to a place that you feel like I, I was appreciated and continued to be appreciated. Um, and then from a more organizational point of view and, um, and career point of view, I would say that, that the alignment that we had at Real Salt Lake, um, I have not experienced anywhere else that I went. And I think was also a contributing factor to why perhaps it didn't go so well in a couple other places, um, particularly self, you know, from my perspective, career-wise. Um, and now I see an opportunity to come here and be a part of what I think can be a really, really good alignment. And when I say alignment, what I'm talking about is ownership to management to to head coach the first team and then on down from there. But those three components, um, I think, to be aligned is really, really critical for, for a soccer team, uh, for any sports organization to be what I think um, – is successful, not just successful one year. I'm talking about successful as a, a team, a club that can be competing for things year in and year out. Mr. Moran, you are up, my friend. I think you're muted. All right. Hey, Jason. Welcome Hi. back. Thank you. When I hear your name, Jason, uh, comes to my mind, experience. Because you have a lot of experience. You have been a lot of, there in a, a lot of finals, very important finals, and you are been there. So congratulations. Welcome back. I just, I, I, I don't want to miss the opportunity to say that. Welcome back. And probably I'm going to make you laugh with my question, but I'm, 
are you going to run with the players around the field before the home game? <laughs> <laughs> you did make me laugh. Well done. And and thanks for, for welcoming me. I appreciate that. Uh, the, the quick answer is no, no chance. <laughs> because to me, that was a great chemistry idea, a way to be close to the players. So welcome back. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. It was a great, uh, great reference there, Nelson. Anybody else have any uh, follow-ups for Jason? Amy, did you want to pop in and say hello? Yeah, sorry, trying to unmute myself. Um, <laughs> yeah, welcome back, Jason. I would love to sit down and chat with you at some point, but uh, just letting you get your bearings for a minute. And uh, maybe after the holidays, Trey can help us connect. Amy, that would be great. I look forward to it. No problem. Mr. Vehar. Yeah, uh, Jason, um, I'm curious, um, how much are you or do you want to be involved in the general manager search that's going on right now? And what do you what are you looking for as that decision is being made um, in, in the next general manager for this club? Yeah, um, I, do, I could say first and foremost, I'm not um, exactly sure where where that situation lies, but to be more specific and answer around answer to your question, I would love to be a part of that search, um, and I think that it 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 would be a really good idea that if the constituents that are here already are involved in that search, then then what you're doing is you're setting you're setting the entire club up for again what I'm going to say again alignment, right? So so that person fits with us. Um, and that person could work well with us and that person represents somebody that can lead us and that we would want to, you know, follow essentially. Uh, and that, that, that piece I think is important. Um, and I know, you know, through my, through my interview process, it was said to me that we would, we would like you to be a part of that. So I'm hopeful that, that, that continues to, to, to be the, the way that the club would like to move forward, but I'm also understanding that in the real world, in the real life, they, they may choose a different path and that's fine too. And because ultimately what I told them um, as I was trying to get in the door is the same now that I'm in the door. It, it doesn't change. I, I want to be here to, to learn first and foremost, um, to help in any area that I can and to just collaborate. Um, that's all I ask is to, is to be a part of the process. And one other small, small thing that I thought of earlier was, um, you know, you obviously you've been in the sport for a long time um, at, at various levels. What is your impression of RSL's current ownership? And uh, what do you think kind of sets Ryan and David apart from maybe some of the other front offices and ownerships that you have uh, dealt with in the past? Yeah, um, I I actually met with every what I think is every, it was, it was six people, um, in a two day period. Um, and four people that I would say the, were the owners. Um, and what I immediate, what, what I was immediately struck with was the intelligence level of all these people is just off the charts. Um, and so the idea, the opportunity to surround myself with and to work with and to rub shoulders with incredibly intelligent people is super exciting. Um, so that's the first the first major point that I want to make is I think these guys are incredible. Um, the second point I would make is that the opportunity to be a part of global football holdings um, where they own all of these teams and all you know in, in the world, as well as the 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 group that owns the the basketball team and the football team and the hockey team and the baseball team, I mean, think about just from somebody who's entering this sort of job, the all of these chances where you could learn from so many different people. It's extremely exciting. And find the final piece here, and probably what I would say is the absolute most important from my perspective, um, is that everybody that I interviewed reiterated something that I think is the most important sort of probably the core philosophy of what I believe is that ultimately this job is about people and they place a tremendously high value in people. And so that was music to my ears and, and the one that I'd like to leave you with. Awesome. Thanks, Jason. Uh, real quick, Joseph had one follow-up and then we will say goodbye. 
Yeah, thank you. Uh, so just as this last question, uh, is there anything that you would like to tease out there for the fans of projects that you have coming up uh, that you can let us know about? Uh, so the fans have, I guess, a little, maybe a, a tangible idea of what sort of things you're working on. Yeah, I guess this would fall. <laughs> this would fall into the category of I, 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 I don't want to overpromise and underdeliver. <laughs> so we are just now getting started with exactly sort of what those projects look like. Uh, again, ownership and John Kimball have been really, really um, mindful of not placing too many things on my plate yet. You know, I'm already feeling like I'm I'm drinking water out of the fire hose here, uh, and so we we've kind of put some of that stuff towards maybe more January. So I think I'd be really premature if I threw some ideas out there that we're just now starting to knock around. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> there, I, I will want throw one thing out there that I've already said a couple other places. I'd like you guys to hear it too, because I want us to all start singing from the same hymnal here. We think, we believe truly in our hearts that we need to be a club that really, really relies on our fans. And I think there's so many clubs out there right now that are just doing so much just lip service about, oh, our fans are so important, this, that, or the other. And, and those are some of the clubs that are spending 50 or $60 million a year. We we are going to be not that. We are going to be a club that need, really, really needs our fans and believe that our fans can provide us something that other places can't. And that what I'm saying in particular is we believe that our fans can help us win games at home. Okay, we really believe that. I always felt 100% that the atmosphere that was created in our stadium was so critical. And a big part of that as well is how we're going to view the, the, the first 15 minutes of our match. Um, you know, I'm speaking with Pablo already about that. What we can do in the first 15 minutes is going to pay huge dividends in the last 30, in particular as it relates to altitude. And in order to do that correctly, guess what? We need the fans there <laughs> to be a part of that. So big push for me, this one you guys can start disseminating. Please, fans, get there early so we can start off the game in the right way. Awesome. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, everybody, for your time this morning. We appreciate you. Um, stay tuned. We got a lot of news coming down the pipe on both first and second team, Utah Royals, Academy, all that between now and Christmas. And